So a woman calls me. So I, I did I did this subject of what if you have a miserable child, which a lot of fine people do. And a woman calls me. I only remember that she had a southern accent. And she said, Dennis, uh, my 33-year-old daughter is just a miserable human being. And I'd like to tell you what I finally decided, what I concluded, and this is my attitude. I didn't break her. I can't fix her. And I thought that that was such wisdom, so much so that I have cited it in speeches around the world. It, it is brilliant. That's what parents should understand. By the way, it, you, A, you can't fix them, and the odds are overwhelming you didn't break them. Don't you think we're responsible for some of what? Some of, yeah, well, you added the word some. Uh, uh, my own attitude is that like so much of life, and you may not like this thinking it's not a religious concept, but I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it religiously. A lot of life is luck, and a lot of life is what we do. You, you get hit by a drunk driver, you didn't do it. That was bad luck. Now, you could say Hashem wanted it. Okay, that's not my view, uh, but I, I have no argument with that. I, it's not arguable against. But uh, I do believe that there, there is luck in life. And, and in other words, things that you are not, good luck as well as bad luck. I have, a, I have an immense amount of good luck. Fact. I have incredible health. I mean, I, I work on it, but so what? You know, we were just talking about a fantastic man who, who we, we all know, uh, the three of us, who, who has Lou Gehrig's disease. That, that, you know, that is, I don't have it. I'm lucky. About children, I got a great story. Uh, tell me if I'm talking too long. You're not talking too long, but I do want to say that when I say good muzzle, I look at it that the muzzle is God. Okay, so then, all right. Let's get into that because it's it, it's a very important subject. I, I, but I, don't I do want to hear the that. story about yes. the, the so yeah. Uh, what, yeah. So I was going to tell you a story. What was it about again? Your your muzzle thing and God uh, sidetracked my a, brain. A, about children. Oh yes. So I I whenever my parents would attend one of my speeches, and they lived in Brooklyn, then New Jersey, and I lived in, in L.A. At a, at a very early age. But whenever they would attend a speech of mine, let's say on the East Coast, or even, even if they visit on the West, uh, I would announce to the audience that they were there. I, I, I like to give them that joy. They loved it. The people all applauded, and, and fine. So at one speech, after my speech, I was within earshot of my father, but he did not know that. He did not know where I was. There were a lot of people milling around about around me and around him. So I overheard some man say to him, oh, Mr. Prager, just want, you, you must have been some great father to produce a son like Dennis. And my father, totally straight-faced, looked at the guy and goes, actually, I'm very lucky. And I thought that that was a humble and beautiful answer. And I feel that about my two sons. I'm very lucky. Of course I contributed. But, but you know how many wonderful parents have, have miserable kids? So now to your thing, you, you say Hashem instead of Mazel. I, when I say Mazel, I, I'm referring right. to Hashem. Yeah. So, so what's your drunk driver theory? That God willed the drunk, drunk driver to hit the person? Well, I think the drunk driver has a choice if he wants to be drunk or not. Okay, so that, so that takes it out of God's hands. Well, I think that, yeah, it does take, um, well... I think that God intended for that to happen. Where, who the who the actual emissary is to to make that happen is the person's choice. Right now, by the way, I just just so you'll know, my my father, who served in World War II, two two and a half years uh, on a, on a ship in the Pacific, and very dangerous work. He was a, it was a transport. And that's what the kamikaze uh, pilots tried to sink, those ships that my father was on. But he had a total belief that the day of your death is ordained by God. You could be on a ship in the Pacific fighting the Japanese, or you could be in your bathtub. You'll die. So he was very calm during the, for the, in the war. So I, I appreciate people who believe that, but that, 
that's only the day of death. You believe, do you believe everything that happens? Then where is our input? What happens, what God ordains is what's going to happen. But we have a choice, first of all, in how we're going to react to the situation. And we also have a choice if we're going to be that person to make someone else's story happen or not happen. You know what I mean? But our own story, we have a choice in how we're going to re react to what God has given us. Yeah, that, that we, okay. So your reaction is in your hands. Yeah. So we do have free will. Yes. Okay. I think that's the free will in how we react to what we're uh, given. Okay, I hear you. So whether we believe in, you know, that it's luck or that it's divinely, you know, um, or, it's, or that it's God, there's still a question of what do we do, like, as human, with our limited capacity. So as parents, you mentioned your father said, I'm lucky. Um, he must have done something to have a son who has, you know, grown up to become a mensch and, you know, check all the boxes. So what's, I guess, what's our avoda as parents? What? Or, we uh, well, there are, two, there are two separate questions, at least in my brain. So I learned a lot in my parents' home. There is no question, especially seriousness about Judaism and seriousness about ethics. And I give them great credit. But the, the truth is, they didn't know where I came from, and I don't know where I came from. When I was in high school, I did no homework for four years. You know what I did? I corresponded with radio stations around the world, listening on shortwave radio. I went to Manhattan from Brooklyn every day, except Shabbos and Sunday, uh, uh, to... Uh, 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 go to concerts. I went to the New York Philharmonic Library to read symphonic scores and I learned, how, I taught myself how to conduct. I conducted a Haydn symphony at the Disney Concert Hall three years ago. I, I've been conducting all of my life and I started to teach myself Russian. Why okay? Russian? Because it was the Cold War enemy and I wanted to understand them. I, I, I'm fascinated by, by bad people. I'm more fascinated by good people, but that's another subject. It's good to be fascinated by good people. It's good to be fascinated, period. <laughs> yeah. People are bored out of their minds. Right. It's a big problem in our society. But they're not, they knew at the time. We, what, what kind of kid teaches himself symphonic scores in high school? So they knew that you were skipping they, they, school? They, they, sorry? Did they know that you were not studying or doing, or doing homework? Well, yes, in fact, uh, it came to a crisis when I was 14. It was, it was a very, it was a sad scene the c a couple of years leading up to that age. And finally, my older brother, who was a nachas machine for my parents, went to Columbia he, at the Yeshiva High School. He was the captain of the basketball team, president of the school body, uh, valedictorian. And then he went to Columbia, then he went to Harvard Medical School. He, he talk about checking boxes. And, and so he said to them, there is only one thing you can do for Dennis, leave him alone. And to their credit, from that day on, they never asked me if I had homework. They even said I could sign my report card with their name. Wow. They, and, and I thrived. Being left alone, I thrived. Interesting, because we had that question for you. What's the balance, you know, should parent, like, there's a bit of discipline missing. Every kid has to be educated in his own way. There are kids, if you leave them alone, they'll end up in the street. There, there are kids, if you bug them, they'll go out of their minds. I was in the latter category. It, 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 it's a, look, it's a very hard job to be a parent. The hardest job. It is the hardest job. That is why so many people don't want to do it in, in this generation.